Now, this hill here is a killer. Absolute killer. I'm gonna stop talking and get the arms pumping. So guys, in other news, I've got a bit of an announcement to make. I Hello and welcome to episode 5 of the Sub 67 Half Marathon Project. Thank you guys for tuning in today and thank you for smashing the support on the series so far and a massive thank you to Saw Running for sponsoring this series. So guys, this is all part of my training plan leading into the Great North Run where I attempt to go under an hour and seven minutes or Project 67 if you like. And that is going to be at the Great North Run this year up in Newcastle and I'm really, really excited. So without further ado, let's delve in to this week's training plan. Um, it's a bit of a tasty one. So guys, training week five started off with a nice, easy nine miles. This was on the treadmill. Um, don't ask me how I managed to motivate myself to do nine miles on a treadmill. Um, even as someone who really loves getting on the tready, um, this still took a little bit of mental strength to get on there and get it done. And that's because the idea of training um, outside for nine miles during the weather that we had on Monday seemed even more grim than doing it on the treadmill. So yeah, I set the treadmill to rolling hills like I always do. Um, I put a carbon plated shoe on because I was like, I just need every every little bit of help I can get to get through nine miles on the treadmill at quarter past six in the morning. And it ended up being a really good, really good run in the end. Um, I think I put on a bit of Gordon Ramsay's Kitchen Nightmares, which, I'm, which I'm really enjoying watching at the moment. Um, I managed to get it done because the weather outside just looked absolutely dreadful. And then there's um, a local friend of mine, Aaron. Give me a little bit of uh, kudos in the comments there. Really appreciate that. And yeah, overall, really happy with the heart rate. I managed to keep my average heart rate down below 150 beats per minute for the easy runs. Um, and this is something that I've always struggled with in the past. I've always found that my easy runs end up getting kind of like 160, 170 beats per minute sometimes, just because I don't know if my heart rate accurately represents how I feel, or maybe I'm just not dropping the ego and actually running slow enough for me, if that makes sense. And I'm really, really working on that in this training block. Then in the late morning, I got on the bike and did an hour um, easy spin. And this was just because um, because of my hectic uni schedule, I wasn't going to be able to train in the afternoon or evening. So I didn't really want to do them as close to the together as they were. So 6.15 and then quarter past 11. Yeah, this <laughs> sometimes you just got to make do, right? And I had to do this in my tracksuit bottoms. Um, these tracksuit bottoms that I've got on, actually. Um, because I left my shorts at home like an absolute idiot. Um, so they ended up being super comfortable. But in the gym, I was getting a little bit roasty toasty because obviously you don't really want to be working out in, in tracks with bottoms in a, in a hot in a hot gym. So yeah, <laughs> I had to do the hour on the bike um, in the track with bottoms. Um, and that was the end of end of Monday. I didn't have any time for SNC, unfortunately. Um, in hindsight, I probably should have done the SNC instead of maybe the spin on the bike. But it's quite busy in the gym, man, if I'm honest. Didn't really fancy it. And this training block has all been about reducing the friction, doing things that I enjoy more than necessarily doing things that you always should do. Because I think that's where I start to lose motivation is when I'm not doing the stuff that I enjoy. Moving on to the Tuesday and I did a treadmill session completely solo. And this was an absolute banger of a session for me. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I think part of the reason this went so well was because some of the PTs at the gym had been gassing me up a little bit, kind of hyping me up beforehand. They were asking me about my times and stuff. They'd, I think they'd seen some of the stuff I posted on Instagram tagging the gym. Um, so then they were just kind of asking me about it. So. Oh, what can I say? I got I got a little bit blushy, you know. I got a little bit nervous, and then I ended up actually running really, really well. So, so this was a treadmill threshold session. You guys know that I've been increasing the volume gradually. I think I've got up to about 26, 27 minutes of volume in the previous week, and this week, as you can say, top line um, of the description, I put make hay while the sun shines, and that was because I felt so good that I did just jump straight up to 30. I knew that on the treadmill it's a little bit safer than doing it outside. The, the surface isn't as hard. Um, and I'd had a decent night's sleep that, that night. So I really, really felt good and really wanted to kind of, yeah, make, make the most of feeling good, you know? So I did four times six minutes on the treadmill with two minutes rest at, um, I think it's about 19 kilometers per hour on the treadmill, um, but in K pace, it's 3.11 per K. That's a 1% incline. I do most of my reps at 1% incline on the treadmill just to emulate the outside terrain. Um, and then I did two times three minutes afterwards with 60 seconds rest, and this was at 19.3 kilometers per hour, um, or five minute miling, 3.07 per K, and that was at 2% incline. That's because um, the treadmills at the gym in Maidstone max out at that speed. I literally cannot go quicker than that, but that's why I had a little play with the incline and, and found that two to two and a half was um, was ideal for me. But yeah, I know that um, 
shouldn't always jump up maybe that much in volume in one week but as I said yeah make make hay while the sunshine felt really really good I made sure I got some good protein in afterwards and yeah thoroughly enjoyed the session and no regrets right so yeah probably probably tough for that session and I did my standard two mile warm up two mile cool down yeah and, and that was that really then in the afternoon I finished clinic slightly early so I managed to come and do a 45 minute easy spin um, on the bike and that was before heading back to the clinic in the evening so I had kind of like a two hour window to get some exercise in so I did my 45 minute spin and then that was all I had time for really by the time I'd been showered and walked back to the clinic I was going to be late so I only had time to do 45 minutes. Then on the Wednesday I woke up um, early again I'm, I'm absolutely I'm not even going to complain and be like one of these guys like oh so tired got off at half five but like, i actually thoroughly enjoyed it um I, and i really enjoy getting up early i feel i feel like a little ego boost like i feel like i'm getting one up on on everyone else in maystone you know like they're all tucked up in bed and i'm out being productive and it just makes me feel really good it's a great start to the day it just kind of sets me up really nicely to have a, a productive rest of the day i guess so guys then you'll also notice there's a bit of a gap between tuesday and thursday and that's because on the wednesday i had a rest day i had a triple day at uni which was 8 30 a.m till 8 30 p.m so i could have trained either really early or really late but i actually decided that my body had felt a little bit tired after weeks of cumulative training decided to take a rest day i'm really a massive advocate of listening to your body like not always having to take rest days if you don't feel like you need them so yeah i did actually decide to take a full rest day because i felt like i needed it and overall i felt i feel like the rest of the week actually benefited from that rest day then on the thursday i woke up early i absolutely love getting up early it gives me a massive kind of ego boost i feel like i'm being really productive Feel like I'm kind of almost getting one up on everyone that's kind of staying in bed and staying nice and tucked in. Got um, got down to the gym and did easy 60 minutes on the bike. Um, and it always just, I just find it starts off the day really nicely. I feel productive and I feel ready to go. And yeah, as you can see there, average heart rate still around that 120, 125 mark, um, which I find is just absolutely perfect for me on the bike. Nice cadence, nice rhythm. Um, and it does feel and does feel easy so um, moving into the evening guys so thursday evening did my standard two mile warm-up and then this session was an absolute banger again another 30 minutes of volume there so we did three times 10 minutes with three minutes rest now i put thrempo slash temp hold um as like a little mix of tempo and threshold because it definitely wasn't tempo but it wasn't quite threshold either um it was kind of in that nice kind of nice zone in between i felt a little bit rusty on the warm-up i always do having had a rest day the day before i don't know if that's something psychological that i've just told myself over the years that having a rest day leads to feeling rusty the day after but then by the time we actually got moving in the session i felt felt really good so yeah westo oliver weston he led me around again um did basically a, a lot of the work for me which is really useful um, and overall i was really really chuffed with the paces they weren't quite as quick as the tempo session we did a couple weeks ago but as I was saying to one of my friends, I think with grass sessions, you've always got to take the paces with a pinch of salt because sometimes the grass is a little bit softer or it's a little bit windier and so on and so forth. So there's lots of things that can impact the paces. And I think in this case, the grass being a little bit softer led to you not getting as much back from it. So it's not being as responsive as I say when the grass is quite hard. Um, so yeah, overall I was really, really chuffed with that. Kept it nice and consistent. And then I did do the last rep um, basically by myself. Um, so I was really happy to, to maintain that pace and not kind of drop off. I think that's something that I've made a mistake of in the past is as soon as everyone else kind of drops out, it's almost like a kind of turn to crap, almost like kind of let the pace go and, and let the consistency fall off. Um, and I didn't do that. But as you can see in the description there, I put don't talk to me about the flying ants. For some reason, there was a ridiculous amount of flying ants, flying bugs everywhere around the field it was just absolutely doing my nothing i wore sunglasses even though the sun wasn't really bright enough for the need uh, to need them just because the ants were just kind of going in your eyes going in your mouth and it was actually starting to really infuriate me i was starting to get a little bit angry but yeah overall really really chuffed with that and as you can see from the workout analysis there some nice paces there 315 313 and 312 per kilometer um so yeah overall was really really happy with that session and again and one of those sessions that is really boosting the confidence the, this confidence getting quite high is probably gonna bite me on the ass at some point in the future but at the moment i'm absolutely loving feeling confident feeling fit um and yeah that's that's one of the joys of the sport right then on the friday i got up a little bit earlier um so i got up at half five on this day and managed to do an easy spin and snc before a uni clinic this morning um so i did 
uh, easy 45 minutes on the bike and then I did 45 minutes of SNC and one of the main things I did um, as part of this SNC was Ben is running a recent core video. It's about 30 minutes long, it's broken up into four sections um, and I really, really found the, uh, the crunch part quite difficult. So do go and check out that video if you fancy a really solid kind of follow along half an hour core session video ties in with some of the low extremities like the legs and stuff as well so I, I, I would just said that I'm someone with a, with a pretty strong core and I struggled with this so definitely go and give um, Ben's core video a little watch um, if you want some kind of guidance on what to do in the gym regarding core yeah overall really really enjoyed that and then on top of that I did some hip mobility work so really trying to work on that range of motion to try and help improve my, my flexibility when I run to improve my stride length and so on and so forth. But yeah, so I did 45 minutes of spin, 45 minutes of core um, in the morning. And then I managed to bribe my clinic tutor um, at the uni clinic to let me out a little bit early. So I had basically an hour and a half to get my run in and get lunch and shower. Uh, and again, um, I, I think I've said this before, I really like running to a, um, like a bit of a time limit. I don't know, it feels like mentally, it, it, it almost becomes like a game. I just thoroughly enjoy it. So yeah, I had another nine miles to do. As I've said in all the other videos, each week I've been progressing the easy runs by one mile. Um, obviously this one wasn't on the Wednesday because I decided to rest on the Wednesday this week, so this was on the Friday. So I ended up doing easy nine miles around this lovely loop um, in Maidstone. And yeah, overall felt really good. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And that's what you're gonna see in the second part of this video. I'm gonna kind of take you around a little tour of Maidstone, if you like, around where I run while I'm at uni. Um, and then also we're gonna talk about some really cool stuff um, while I run. Some things are uh, kind of announcements on the channel that I've got um, kind of lined up, which I'm really, really stoked about. Um, but you have to wait a couple minutes for that. Um, so yeah, easy nine miles and that was kind of the end of that day um, because I had a, a busy afternoon coming back from uni, etc. Um, so yeah, so that was um, the end of Friday, SNC spin and an easy nine mile run, so a really productive day. Then on Saturday, um, the weather turned quite bad actually, it got really windy, kind of stormy and the, there was a bit of a downpour. Um, so we went to the track and I had two sessions in mind. I put a poll on my Instagram story about asking people about their favourite 5k sessions and Matt Stoney, a friend of mine, came back and said um, a session that he really, really liked. And um, I was originally gonna do that, but because of the downpour, I didn't, um, and ended up doing what I'd originally planned, which was this 20 times 200 off of 100 meters jog. So I will do Matt's session at some point in the future, so that's why I'm not telling you what it is, because you'll find out in a future video. But yeah, so 20 times 200 off of 30 seconds slash 100 meters jog. So basically I would jog 100 meters, sometimes it would be 27 seconds, sometimes it would be 33 seconds. So it averaged out at about 30 seconds recovery. Got absolutely drenched, but um, I haven't actually put the average on there, but I averaged about 32 seconds per rep. Let me see if I can show you here. So yeah, 31, 29, 33, 29, 32, and so on and so forth. Yeah, you get the gist. Um, but yeah, the idea of this session was just to try and get me just, just under that 5K pace with like a short recovery. Um, but in, in that wind and that rain, I've, <laughs> I found it really demoralizing. I was just kind of just trying to get the session over and done with as, as quick as possible, really. But as you can see from that um, from that image there, the, the track mode um, on the Coros watch makes it look, look makes it look really nice and smooth. Not sponsored at all um, by Coros, but um, yeah, I just like, like the track mode. I just think it makes um, the track reps a lot more accurate. Then again, did a uh, two mile cool down um, as I normally do. Then I got home from the session and I had a busy afternoon of massages lined up. So at the weekend I have to work to kind of bring in a little bit of income for myself. So I did a I did an at home SNC session. So this is pro primarily using things like resistance bands, using the edge of the sofa for some single leg squats and things like that. Nothing absolutely crazy here. I just stuck on. Um, I think I, I think I put on Little Britain actually while I was doing this session. Um, something to know you know make me giggle a little bit. Um, and also make the time pass while I'm doing some of these a little bit more boring exercises at home. So yeah, got a got a 54 minute of SNC in there, did a little bit more core, um, but predominantly it was working on the adductors. I'm really, really trying to strengthen those up and feeling the benefits of it as well. In the afternoon, we had my first double of the training block so far. So I went out um, and that's why I rested earlier in the week because I knew that this week I wanted to do a, a double day. And I just went out on a lovely new route, basically where I live, the uh, a road nearby has been closed for over a year so I haven't been able to run down it at all I haven't been able to see what's been going on so I used this opportunity to do my five mile run um, and then come up around that new road that had been built 
absolutely lovely road. It's going to be perfect for some hill wraps at some point in the future. So I'm excited to use that. Um, and it's been so like freshly laid, so it's like really nice and smooth and nice to run on. Um, and yeah, it was just nice to kind of change up the route a little bit, and and also nice to get my first double day of the, of the session in. So um, yeah, overall really really chuffed with that. Legs felt a little bit tired, I have to say, after this first double day of the block done. I'm not going to get as many double days in this block as I have done in the past because I think I need to be more sensible this time around. But I do think there's something that I do like to include in my training block, um, just that extra aerobic stimulus. So yeah, I didn't push the pace at all, but just kept it nice and. Nice taking over and did a little bit of exploring at the same time. And then we come on to Sunday and this is where I've just finished my run, um, hence um, long sleeve top because in, in England it's a little bit cold, it's a little bit windy today. Um, I think it's only about 15 degrees. And again, yeah, longest longest run of the block so far. So I actually had a little bit of company. Um, a friend of mine, Aaron, he came to my house and we ran to Canterbury to meet Canterbury Endurance. Um, and then we ran through the woods um, and ran back. So yeah, just, um, just 15 miles. So I gradually built it up and we're up to 15 miles now. I think in this training block, I'm going to try and peak at around 16 to 17 miles um, because I think in the past 15 miles hasn't quite given me enough volume to be kind of comfortable over the half marathon distance. So I'm going to increase it a little bit, just that extra time on feet. But yeah, we didn't we didn't um, overdo it today, kept it really nice and controlled. Yeah, just basically seven minute miling, keeping them um, nice and controlled, but also adding in some nice hills here and there. Um, so you can see from the... Um, the elevation there is pretty up and down for, for a lot of it um, through the woods through the trails it's nice and soft underfoot so it takes a little bit of that kind of that force and that load um, away from the legs um, and yeah overall really tough to get my longest run of the of the block so far done and yeah just show a little bit more consistency and then we finish off the week on 107 kilometers and you can see look at that beautiful graph as we've built it up slowly all the way up to this week capping out at if it lets me tap on it 107.82 kilometers this week, which I'm really chuffed with. Um, I'm gonna carry on building. Next week, we might take a slight dip in terms of mileage, but you'll have to wait for the second part of this video um, on my run where I discuss why that might be. Um, and it's pretty cool, so I hope you um, do enjoy that. But just before we get into my easy run footage, just a massive thank you to Saw Running for sponsoring this video. So you guys have seen plenty of the short sleeve tops that I've been wearing in recent videos. But in this one today, I've got a long sleeve top on because I just ran in this because it was quite windy outside. And this is their hot weather long sleeve running tee. Now, to me, that was something that I'd never even heard of before. How can you have a hot weather long sleeve? But it's so lightweight that even in like the horrible windy conditions like it is today, where you don't want to be kind of kind of almost like uncovered with a short sleeve t-shirt, you can put a long sleeve t-shirt on so you feel covered up in the horrible wind and the rain but you're not going to get over hot because it's so breathable and lightweight and that's what I did today and it's just an absolute lovely material like look at that like you can actually you can see my face um, and I actually had a few comments actually by um, a few of the group going oh that's a really nice top um, which you know never a bad thing and yeah a massive thank you to Saw for sponsoring this video they don't just do your standard t-shirts vests shorts they also do some absolutely lovely um, long sleeve apparel as well so do go and check them out sawrunning.com Thank you, Saul, for sponsoring this video. And yeah, I hope you enjoy this footage of me running through Maystone with some cool announcements along the way. Enjoy. So guys, you join me out on my easy run. I've got another eight miles to do. I've just done one. So this is gonna be a nine mile easy run. As you've seen in these kind of recent weeks, I've been building up the easy runs one mile each week. So this week's easy runs have been nine miles. So yeah, I'm out in Maystone, just started in a field. So we're gonna head along the river. Uh, there's a few hills here and there, but we're gonna have a little chat along the way. Um, we've got some stuff to talk about, about how training's been going and so on and so forth. So yeah, sit back and uh, let's get going. Avoiding the horse poop and wasps. So I just thought we could talk about some tips about how I get out the door in the morning, motivate myself. So one of the first things I do is make sure I lay my kit out the night before. Not having the friction of trying to pick an outfit really helps with motivating myself to get out. And it means I can make sure I have all my favorite kits clean and ready to go, ready for that morning's run. Now, 
this hill here is a killer absolute killer goes on for 800 meters or so so I'm gonna stop talking and get the arms pumping so guys another thing I like to do is plan the route so no out and backs no paths or roads that you run on more than once so nice loop A to B with no overlaps it keeps me mentally stimulated and uh, doesn't give me the option of throwing in the towel because I've got a loop to do I don't run past my house uh, no chance to stop another thing I like to do is have the music or podcast pick the night before so there's no friction so I have to make any choices just have it already planned out some of my favourite podcasts at the moment include Run It Three Ways uh, Coffee Club For The Kudos The What's Occurring podcast if you're more into cycling I just have a nice selection there's always something for me to listen to keep me interested So guys, in other news, got a bit of an announcement to make. I didn't foresee myself doing any races leading up to the Great North Front. If I'm honest, didn't think I'd be fit enough or in the right mindset. But I am actually doing a 5k race next Friday. Um, and to be honest, I'm absolutely buzzing for it. I'm buzzing for the fact that the, the training's gone well enough that I feel like I can race and I'm also buzzing that I'm in such a good mind frame and mindset at the moment that everything is going right so yeah part of that is down to you guys support so I really appreciate all your support on the videos all the likes and comments and people telling me it's inspiring their journeys from come back and things like that absolutely love it so yeah I'm going to be doing the Home Nations 5k which is um, put on by sportshoes.com as part of the podium 5k um, so it's in Cardiff and I'm absolutely buzzing for it but in terms of what I want from the race to be honest it's more of a progress checker I'm not going to be tapering for the race I'm not going to be upset if it goes badly I'm not going to be ecstatic if it goes better than expected it's literally just 5k pushing my body to the limit and seeing what's coming around. And in this 10 week training block, it's almost halfway. So it's a really good progress checker to see how I, how I feel the train is going with regards to Project 67. Am I on target? Am I behind? Anyway guys, that is the end of my 9 mile easy run. As I said, I'm absolutely ecstatic where I am with my running at the moment. Um, and this series or this structure of training has given me a real boost and a real ability to stay motivated, if that makes sense. So definitely, if you don't do it already, definitely imply some sort of set length training plan like I've done with like 10 weeks. There's a deadline, I have to keep motivated, I have to get it done otherwise. The goal that I've set just isn't going to happen and I'm absolutely chuffed with where I am at the moment being as six weeks ago I could barely run four miles at the pace I just ran nine miles out on an easy run so there we go 
Thanks for tuning in guys. It's a bloody hot one here in Maidstone. There's loads of little flies around. Um, I had a problem with them at the session yesterday as well. But thanks for all the support in the series. I really, really appreciate it. Um, please share with running buddies. It really does help the channel grow. I really, really appreciate it when you guys do that. So anyway guys, please like, subscribe, share with running buddies. Love the pain. <sighs> that last hill was a bit of, bit of a killer. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.